such responsibility as on the order paper. Chairman of the Select Committee, Harriet Baldwin. Thank you very much, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. And may I associate myself with those uh, passionately expressed words from the Chair? And I did think there might be a few more people here this evening to talk about the Charter for Budget Responsibility after we have had so much debate across the country about the Office for Budget Responsibility and its forecasts over the last uh, year or so. I think this was the year where the Office for Budget Responsibility actually made it into the headlines on numerous occasions. And so I thought there might have been a bit more of a heated debate uh, here this evening. And I listened to uh, the words of the opposition uh, just now, and I'm not sure whether I understand at the end of that speech whether or not uh, the opposition front bench is in favour of tonight's uh, motion uh, and, and charter. Uh, I'm not sure how, after listening to that speech, whether they're in favour of budget responsibility or... Uh, in fact, I didn't really hear any suggestions at all uh, as to um, the solutions to the, the, the criticisms that they raise. But uh, what I wanted to do this evening was just uh, reiterate uh, uh, the rationale for those who weren't here back in early 2010 as to why the Office for Budget Responsibility was originally set up. And it was because in the Treasury of 2008, the Treasury of 2009, and the, tre the Treasury of early 2010, it was far too easy for the government simply to make its own forecasts and to mark its own homework. And I think that there is merit uh, in having uh, someone uh, external to the Treasury, uh, oblivious of ministerial pressure, actually come up with a set of forecasts, which I think we can all acknowledge none are going to be perfect. So uh, none of them are going to uh, have perfect foresight about the future. But uh, there is that externality, which I think um, is a way of, of marking uh, the uh, Treasury work and the Treasury projections. I think there is certainly um, an argument that can be then made by, uh, by the Chancellor as to where they might take uh, issue with some of the um, elements going into the forecast. And, and I think there is a, a more dynamic quality often um, to tax revenues um, and, uh, 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 than, than is uh, perhaps put into um, some external forecasts that have been referenced here this evening. So I think that's a, certainly a debate which a, a Chancellor can have with the numbers. But just, I think we do need to remind ourselves of the importance of this uh, process and the external nature of it. The second point that I just wanted to raise, if I may, is uh, the uh, fiction that clouds uh, the Office for Budget Responsibility forecast that we highlighted in one of our recent reports from the Treasury Select Committee, which is around fuel duty. And again, this is a practice that goes back uh, many, many chancellors um, and many, many governments, uh, which is to put into the projections for future tax revenue um, a ratchet up every year of uh, fuel duty. And uh, yet, for the last 12, 13 years, uh, every chancellor at the dispatch box has decided uh, not to uh, implement it. And I think it would be very, very astonishing to me, and I, I noted that the uh, Chief Secretary gave me a little cheeky <coughs> smile there, if what is currently projected in terms of uh, the fuel duty forecast in the Office for Budget Responsibility forecast, which is an extra 12 pence to go on to fuel um, after the budget if the Chancellor does nothing, I think we can all agree that that is fiction. I cannot see a Chancellor coming to the dispatch box on the, or the Chancellor on the 15th of March and increasing fuel duty by 12 pence. I would be astonished. Um, and that's because the 5 pence that was a temporary one-year reduction expires, and then there is the cumulative impact of, of the ratchet over the years. So I just wanted to highlight the fact that there is uh, some element of a work of fiction in the Office for Budget Responsibility forecast. I think it would be healthier for all concerned if there could be a more realistic approach taken um, to the forecast for fuel duty, not just in the short term, but in uh, the medium term, where I think we can all recognise that uh, uh, 
uh, there is going to have to be a change as more and more people are buying electric cars um, in terms of how we how we tax um, uh, 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 transport and drivers um, and uh, just to publicise the uh, way in which uh, our committee has come together on a cross-party basis uh, to make that point. Uh, Stuart Hersey. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Uh, can I also offer my condolences to Robert